Esker Cycles just announced their Hey Duke LVS, and today we're going to take it out on the trail to see what it rides like. This is the Hey Duke LVS. This has a 600 millimeter chainstay, longest chainstay I've ever ridden, but it's for a purpose. I had the opportunity to chat with Tim, the owner of Esker Cycles, to talk more about the design of this bike. We're here with Tim, the mad scientist who created this thing. He's the owner of Esker Cycles. He's a fellow bike nerd. He knows more about bikes than any hundred of us put together. Thanks. What the heck were you thinking on this? Uh, well, the Hey Duke, it's, it's, uh, it's become an iconic bike for us. You know, we introduced it with Advocate in 2016, um, really evolved it into pretty much a, a really dedicated bike packing rig. Bike packing is probably the second most common way I ride a bike. Also, at the same time, I'll give credit where credit's due. I was riding a Salsa Black Burrow for a fat bike one winter, and it's like, this is kind of something cool, right? It ride, it actually rode way better than expected for a longer wheelbase. Um, and so then my mind clicked. I was like, all right, I want a Hey Duke with the long wheelbase. Two years ago, built myself a prototype and I've been riding it for quite a bit. Um, kind of as a something like, I just want this. Uh -huh. And I can. Technically, it's a 600 millimeter rear stay over our normal <laughs> 440 uh, Hey Duke. So it's six inches. Yeah. It's all it's giving you is six inches. But that six inches gives you that cool pocket behind the seat tube, um, which fits 48 ounce Nalgene, a two liter water bladder. That can be your food stash, whatever. Um, but it also gives you an additional six inches for the rack. So our custom rack is also longer where it can fit extra long custom panniers from like Sidero, like my personal bike, or it can actually fit like four you could take the the revelate panner yeah you could fit four of them on that rack <laughs> no way yeah it so it does basically it does three things it uh gives you a little bit better ride quality the longer wheelbase when you're on a real long ride the frame just has a little more inherent flex um so it it has a little softer ride quality the longer wheelbase also makes the bike more stable and then of course the last thing with a long wheelbase you have a lot more load carrying capacity so you can actually you know you might fit one two or all three of those needs but that's who it's for. We named the rack. It's called Molly Rackwald. Okay. Yep. Because um, it uses a Molly panel system. So if you go outside the bike industry into trucks and things like that, there's millions of bags yeah. that can just strap to that universal system. Um, there's all kinds of accessories that can bolt to it, things like that. It is size specific to the frame because it's direct hard bolted. So it's very strong, very stable. Tim, thanks for being a nerd. Yeah, you bet. I'm making Anytime. awesome stuff. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, thanks. All right, let's go take this where it's designed to be ridden and a little bit where it's not just to see because I've never ridden a hardtail with a chainstay this long before. Right away, you can definitely tell that the back wheel is a little further behind you. There's a little less weight on it when climbing. It doesn't feel as strange as I thought it would. It's not cargo bike long. This is the type of terrain that I think this bike's really designed for. Wide open spaces, long days in the saddle. Stuff where there's bumps and you still need suspension. More for getting out there and having an experience than having an adrenaline rush. It's really interesting. The bike does want to stay more upright. All the micro balances that you make, it feels like I don't have to make them so much. Wow, I didn't think it'd be that much more stable, but it is. Another advantage of the long tail is your rack and your bags are further behind you. And you don't have to worry about your heels rubbing them. It's definitely less maneuverable than a standard Hey Duke or most mountain bikes. That should come as no surprise. So yeah, on uh, gravel roads, this thing's wonderful. I love that it fits big tires, up to 29 by 28 in the rear, 29 by 30 in the front. I just want to turn off the camera, ride into the sunset, pitch a tent, and go bike packing right now. What a special feel this has. Yeah, the rear wheel's so far behind you, you don't feel the bumps as much. It's like a delayed bump, but it's also not right over the bottom bracket, so it doesn't go straight into your heels and into your calves. It kind of, it's kind of, you know, reacting to the bumps back there on its own. And I might be crazy, but I feel like the fork's doing a little more work right now because I'm up front and even my feet are up toward the fork. It's not as awkward as riding with a trailer. 
that wheel you feel that it's back there but it's not fighting you it's just following you so yeah it's got a modern head angle not twitchy at all not too slack not too steep if i were to get one of these i'd size down to a small just for a slightly shorter reach on my trail bikes this reach is perfect and i like it for kind of charging but where this is a little more relaxed chill pace where you're pedaling all day i'd like a little bit shorter effective top tube a little bit to higher rise bars maybe just to kind of be in cruiser position kind of like that priority x so i think sizing will depend on how you intend to ride it hey duke i like the medium hey duke lvs i think i'd want a small so there are a few misconceptions about longer chain stays all things created equal a 600 mil chain stay will flex more than a 430 chain stay just the length of how long that is there's more leverage on this rear axle but that doesn't mean all long chain stay bikes are flexy and all short chain stay bikes are stiff you can alter the tubing profile the bracing and that sort of thing to make it ride differently one thing you do notice the difference of regardless of stiffness is on short wheelbase bikes when you hit a bump you feel like you're standing on the axle a little bit like those bumps do get translated to you even on a softer bike they feel right underneath you whereas on this it feels like it happens a second later and it's not jarring you so much one way to describe it is if you were wheeling on this thing you'd be like two feet ahead of the axle up in the air it'd be a really odd sensation and the same thing kind of happens with the bumps you're up there and i think the fork's doing a little bit more work of holding you up and actually suspending your bottom bracket a little bit to take less of the bumps while this is flexing so yes you do get a little more flex out of this but also your body position is more shifted forward so the front's going to have more traction the fork's going to be doing more work because it's carrying more of your load you may even have to adjust your fork quite differently than you do on a short wheelbase bike it's been really interesting to ride this thing let's take it on some single track this is not a rowdy trail but i kind of want to see what it where its limit is and where you're like yeah okay if i were bike packing in this stuff i'd want the regular hey duke who knows maybe this does way better than i think on the single track let's find out this is going to be different a lot of my riding style has to do with timing the rear wheel both for unweighting and getting up ledges and little wheelies it's very different it is not unwieldy it feels more like a rear wheel is following me than it's part of me it's unloaded it's very light on the rear wheel and it skids easily i would size down rotors fire riding unloaded but this thing's meant to be loaded still i'm having fun i'm surprised pleasantly surprised how much fun this thing still is i felt down a couple corners the back wheel would slide just a little because it's so unweighted right now and i clipped the corner a little too tight and i could feel the back wheel on the inside of the corner where there was no traction totally at home on this type of trail this is not pushing it yet we got to find more technical terrain to find its limit i mean the chain stays only six inches longer it's not like it's four feet back there it is such a smooth ride quiet bike a little more planted and composed and chunk than a traditional hardtail the flex is not night and day for a guy like me i weigh 190 pounds right now i'm not like feeling it move and just track the ground but it's not a stiff feeling it's not night and day smoother than the smoothest steel frames i've ever ridden but it's right up there with them it feels great i think 29 by 2.8 suits this bike really well suits the attitude of where you'd be taking it and what it's good at I'm actually using the dropper probably only using about 30 mil of it okay that was a little spicy I kind of just ran into that and hoped for the best and it didn't go great 
the bags are tucked in nicely. I don't feel them or notice them. Some bags will rub your legs or your heels when you ride, not these. Very well done, Sidero. I am thinking about where my back wheel is and taking corners a little wider. Uh oh. Let's see if this will hit. That bottom bracket gonna hit? No, we're good. All right, let's ride it. As long as I don't sag the fork too much, we should be okay going over this. Oh man, the little wheelies up ledges are impossible on this thing. No surprise there. It's doing it though, so if I was on a route that contained this, I wouldn't be worried. If your trail was 90% this, I'd pick the regular Hey Duke. But if it was 10%, I'd still be okay on this thing. <laughs> that delay on the rear wheel to come down sure takes some getting used to. This is more capable than I thought it was. This definitely still feels like a mountain bike. It doesn't feel like a touring bike with knobby tires. There's very much mountain bike DNA on this. Here on Hardtail Party, I am all about bikes that are special, that stand out, that just don't feel vanilla. And this definitely fits that bill. There's some secret sauce going on here. In my opinion, this bike is for a specific purpose. It's for getting out there and hauling lots of gear. I don't think this is going to win the Colorado Trail Race ever or the AZT. I don't think it's meant for people who are racing and trying to carry the lightest amount of stuff and who sleep in a tiny little bivy bag in outhouses when they find them. This is for people who are going to carry a little bit more stuff, who want that integrated rack, which I think is fantastic, wonderful execution of that. This is for people who can benefit from this extra storage. And I know you think, oh, yay, a half a square foot. Is that really a big deal? It is when you're bikepacking and it's in the perfect place, right between the rear axle and the bottom bracket. So it will carry that weight nice and low and nice and sturdy. So if your jam is bikepacking and getting out in the middle of nowhere, whether you're solo or with friends, and the terrain is not too ledgy and not too technical, I think this would be such a sweet tool for that job. I would really like to load this up and see how it differs from a loaded Hay Duke and see how that weight distribution is when you got 10 or 15 pounds on the back. I think it would really come alive in that situation. It was in some ways easier to ride on technical terrain and in other ways harder. Lifting the front up, up over even eight inch ledges is just not happening, at least not for me. I don't have the strength or technique to do it. It's, it's not really meant to do that. Going down, it's no problem. And kind of going through flowy stuff is just fine. It, the, the wheel's a little bit further back there, but it doesn't feel like you're driving a bus. Really tight switchbacks, you're definitely gonna feel it. You have to take the turns a little bit wider, but I was pleasantly surprised how well it did on regular trails, aside from having to lift the front up. There were a few times I'd come into something, it was technical enough, and I just kind of like plow into it. I wasn't quite in control. I felt like a new rider. I wasn't riding the bike, the bike was riding me. It was just a little bit not as easy to place where I needed it to. Is that a big surprise? Not at all, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Anyway, I'd love to hear where you would take this bike. What trip would you take it on? Are you interested in long wheelbase bikes like this? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.